next man up mentality. And that's why the spring is so important to develop those techniques and fundamentals that it takes to be successful during the season. So there's a lot of turnover from last year at defensive line and then also that position coach leaving to go to Denver. Kind of who do you see emerging right now in camp being the leader of that group and getting them on the right page? Yeah, that's, you know, the guys that are on the field right now, I'm really, really, really pleased with Jacobian's growth. Uh, he's doing a nice job. I'm really, really pleased with Savion's growth. You know, and you still have Makai Wingo. He's at every practice. He may not be on the field. You still have Mason Smith. He's at every practice he's not on the field. I'm excited about the potential depth of that group. There's a lot of guys that are growing, and, and that's exciting. Back to the defensive line. At this point, how do you even kind of evaluate the position with so many people out? Uh, you know, you kind of have to go back, and, and in some ways you know – you know, Makai played so many snaps for us. We we know what he can be. You know, um, Mason, I have a pretty good feel for what Mason can be because he did go through a whole training camp and a whole spring. Um, I think what you see, too, is you, you get an opportunity to work with the guys that really need more reps. Not that those other guys don't because they do, but it, it's the next man up, and it gives you a chance to see that growth. Um, to me, the spring is all about setting the stage for fundamentally how you're going to approach the summer and then training camp. Um, so we're, I, I feel like we're in a good spot with our growth there right now. Yeah, Coach. Um, obviously, Omar Spates comes in. Uh, what has he meant to you all as a defense and helping Harold Perkins, like you said, um, make that transition? Yeah, I love Omar's approach. Um, the, the way he goes about and handles his business. Uh, the focus he comes in with, the attention to detail he has in his work. You know, he's not the most vocal guy. He's more vocal on the field. But what he does do is he does a great job modeling to that whole room and to Harold. Hey, Coach, uh, about the Jack uh, position as well. I know there's some new faces, guys, transfers coming in and freshmen as well. What do you got to say about that group and how they're really progressing right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm encouraging the power and numbers in that group, you know. I think right now you got four guys in the group that are really competing. You know, uh, Ovi's got a lot of experience, um, but we're hap happy with the development of Braden. We're happy with the development of Princeton. We're happy with the development of Jackson. Now, we, like I said, we got a long way to go. You know, it's spring practice number eight, but those guys have shown growth and potential. Uh, Matt, I, you might not, like you're kind of saying, be to this point yet, but when you start to look at all these defensive pieces, it seems like they can play different spots, especially on the front and do a lot of different things. How, what do you sort of envision uh, for this group in terms of be, do, having the multiplicity that you like to have in a defense? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And to be honest with you, you have to have that to be successful in this conference. Um, you can't sit in one front and be successful. The, the, the offensive coordinators, the offensive line coach, and the offensive linemen are too good at running the football and too good at ID and protections. So it, it gives you a chance to be multiple in your alignments and, and multiple in your assignments and gives you a chance to have matchups when you get into an obvious pass situation. Do you feel like having Coach Jancic on the field gives you what you want as far as being able to, to teach those positions differently? Yeah, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm a big John Jancic fan. Um, I love having J.J. out there. He gives great energy. He's a great teacher. Uh, he's been successful in this league, uh, both as a coordinator and as a position coach. He, he's definitely been an added value on the field. So why is it important to have that position group coached differently and separately? Yeah, because they, they have to do so many things, right? Where, you know, for the most part, our defensive line, the interior, I mean, they're playing as part of the front all the time. That jack is a little bit different. We move him all over the place. He can be part of coverage. He can be part of the front. He can uh, be an inside rusher. He can be an outside rusher. So there's, although it's not the most difficult position to learn from a assignment standpoint, it's very important that you drill the technical aspect of that position. Um, just with Harold, I mean, you get to spend as much time with him as anybody on the field. Just, just how have you seen him grow, not only as a, a player, but as a, as a person here in year two? Yeah, I think the, the number one thing is he's got a better understanding of our process and how we prepare. 
Um, and that's, that's the biggest thing. He's, he's, his habits are much more uh, consistent. Um, you know, and, and, and as I said last year, that hasn't changed. He just loves football. Uh, really coachable. I know Makai's not out there, but he was so important to what y'all did last year. How, what is his ceiling for growth, you know, once he gets healthy? Yeah, I think th this is a great opportunity for him to increase the mental part of his game, you know, to learn more what offenses are doing, uh, the finer techniques and fund fundamentals for how he can get an edge in his game, uh, to learn be a great student in the film room. So there's still value even though he's not on the field and getting physical reps. Looks like Sage Ryan is getting a lot of first team work, at least when we're out there, maybe he's ready to take that step here in year three. What are you seeing from him right now in the spring in terms of where he's at? Sage is getting more consistent in his work. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he's doing a better job playing the ball too, from a you know, a football standpoint. Um, still a lot of room for growth, but he, he he's been more consistent. Are there any of these mid year enrollees, freshmen that are gonna be new in the fall to the field that you just can't figure out a way that they're not going to be on the field. Like it's hard to keep them off. I mean, that's the great thing about the way coach practices. And right now they're, you know, I'm sure they're all swimming to an extent, but they're all getting valuable reps. Um, you know, uh, guys that have had some a good spring so far. I, uh, Jackson's had a good spring. Javian's had a good spring. Uh, I think in the last three practices, the lights kind of clicking a little bit for wit. Um, things are slowing down for him a little bit. You know, Ryan Yates, things are starting to slow down a little bit for him. You know, and, and like I said, it's practice number eight. The, the true thing for these guys is they start learning, you know, what we value, what our process is, what, you know, what our traits of excellence are. And that way in the summer and in training camp, they can apply those. Yeah. I'm just wondering, with the numbers being low on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, does it give you more concentrated work as a coach? Do you, is there a plus to it? Yeah, that's a great, great question. The way coach, the way coach does our practice, I think it's a good mix between putting the ball down and, and learning to play the game and dividing up and having whether it's half line pass, half line run, technique and fundamental work, where you're not putting a guy at risk with injury and overdoing their player load, but still teaching them how to play the game. So it's kind of part, whole, part, whole, if that makes sense. And, uh, you know, you may not be able to, to go out there and play a 100-play scrimmage, but you're still getting good, good, good live work along with practice work that develops you. You've got, obviously got a completely rebuilt cornerback room uh, at this point. But especially with Deuce out, do you kind of see this being something that's going to probably take into the preseason to really sort through who you all want to lean on there? And just what do you make of the guys that you've got? Absolutely. I, I mean, you guys heard this a little bit last year, and it's the same thing. You know, both as a staff and as players playing together, you got to learn how each other – how we communicate amongst ourselves, uh, how they play. You know, there's – a there's a little bit of uh, you got to play snaps together, uh, whether you're a corner, a safety, and then as coaches, we're it's a great opportunity for us to learn on the field what their true strengths and weaknesses are, so we can put them in better positions to succeed.